What I'm doing is I'm making a grindstone. Why? Because I want to grind flour. Uh, this is Sydney sandstone. Amazing stuff. And this is going to be my major main tool for this whole deal. And that is just going to be all about doing that for probably a, about a week until that grinds through, I don't know. Now, obviously you want to have some harder kind of stone. Hard things will cut through softer things. Pretty simple. The prototype was this little dealie here. Beautiful little grindstone. And this is going to be attachable to my spinning wheel. And, uh, spinning the yarn and then looming in, into a Navajo loom style weave. So, the first thing you want to do with this stuff is actually find your center point. And you can do that a number of ways by either getting a stick like this and going, oh yeah, that's my center to there, that's about my center to there, about even. So you get your relative size, your relative point, and you start grinding it away. And you just blow that away. And that's essentially what I did for both of these too. The smaller one uh, took me a day, uh, actually. Not um, flat out the whole time. This was, you know, take a break here and there, have some lunch. And that was done with this. A screwdriver and a screw. And that was just sitting there and grinding like that. And that takes about a day to drill through something like this. Okay? The paper on there was just so that I could create the circle stencil so that I could then have my center point, put it on there, and then I got the rock, and I ground it against a bit of cement that I had as the footing of my house. And then I got a bit of uh, twig from Casuarina, put through there, and then I was able to grind like that to get a nice even roll and a nice even shape. Eventually, once you've got that circle in there, you can refine it and refine it, and you get a nice little shape. Now, as I said, that'll go on my spinning wheel, and that will be used for grinding my tool. The next one I used this, however, there's a ratio to the central hole um, for the size of the object. Obviously, the larger the object, the heavier it is, the more oomph you need to push it. So a small hole like this wouldn't really work for something of this size. <laughs> That's a fun toy, by the way. I, I just, I'm a big kid at heart, what can I say? <laughs> um, yeah, so that's, uh, what is it we got here? That might not even end up holding that space properly. That's just a bit of uh, cement glue. It's actually uh, tank, water tank cement glue. So ultimately I think I'm going to have to make some cement or something to make that proper. Or just grind this until it's smaller. Now I did for a short, um, this little piece here was originally something similar to, uh, you know, got some big chunks off to the side. And as I said, we've marked out our circle a little bit. And all I did with this one, just a big old chunk of wood here. Uh, a nice bit of knot wood is usually good for a mallet. And then just, uh, you sort of crack a line. Eventually you want to find the center point on the other side so that you can meet them in the middle. When you're looking for big stones like this again, you want to find one that's as close to the shape that you want it to be so you don't have to do so much work to it. As you can see, it's already flat. And uh, yeah, the other side of this is also the same shape. This was the largest stone I could find in the mass of stones that my dad has lying around here. I'll just zoom in on that, here you go. Yeah, it's a little hole, not very big at all. Yeah. <laughs> it's like zooming into one of Gina Reinhardt's open cut mines. Whoa, Gina Reinhardt, oh goodness. <laughs> oh yeah, these little steel tools are great too, because again, same deal, steel is a bit harder, and so you grind a bit faster, and I might end up using this a bit, because that seems to be able to speed that up a bit. However, if you don't have steel lying around, that's your next best bet. And if you don't have that lying around, well, good luck with that, because it's going to take a while, but you'll get it done. Now, let's see if I can crack through this. Mm. 
Now, if I was on a harder surface, instead of grass, this would probably just crack off really simply, but uh, I'm not on a hard surface, so. Susanna, don't you cry for me. Yeah, I'm gonna bring back a lots of gold me for victory. There we go, getting chunks off now. I work all day, sleep all night. Don't you cry for me. I'm gonna bring back lots of gold me for victory. I work all day, sleep all night. There we go. Chunk. There we go. That's pretty much starting to crack already. There we go. Like that. Alrighty, it's been about a week since the first bit of the footage, and we've gotten a fair bit of a ways down into our hole just by basically sitting here doing that. Now, the first bit of the hole was done with this rock here, and that was just again, same very simple principle there, and that's what got me pretty much that shape there. And as you can see, that blunts out the object that I'm using pretty quickly. So this was actually a square tip, but because I'm shaping like this, any points end up chamfering down to a little rounded space that way. So, close your eyes if you blow and you're not using um, protective eyewear there. Um, you don't want the dust getting in your eyes. Otherwise, use protective eyewear. Uh, what I've done here is a template. Okay, that's what I'm going to want it to be the shape of. And this is going to be, as I said, a flour grinding, uh, wheat grinding mill sort of deal. This dimension is 48 centimeters across from there to there. Um, so that's taken about a week to get just down to there. And that's not been full on hard work every single day for hours on end. That's been you know, five, 10 minutes here or there, maybe 20 minutes if I'm really super keen. That's all that is. Now today I've been doing a bit of light chiseling because I've done the um, sides with the template. I've been chiseling away, hacking through that with the nice big log uh, mallet that I showed you before. Now you want to really be careful with the angle that you do that at. If you angle it in right like that, you're going to cut at that angle. So you'll end up taking out a large chunk of your uh, stone. So you kind of angle it a little bit further out and then it's a little bit of a difficulty to get it to actually smooth out quite how I want it to. We're gonna come back to this, jeez, uh, when I've maybe rounded that out a whole bunch more and uh, when that hole's fully done through and... Alrighty, so um, it's uh, the next day and what I've been doing is just uh, flipped over the stone and now I'm chiseling from the opposite side. So we've got this side here, and we've got the side here that's, because it's been on the ground now, all the templates kind of just getting roughed up a little bit too much, but anyway. Uh, it tells me which so parts of the stone are sitting a bit too high up. So that's got a bit of a mound there. That's it got a dent, that's got a mound. All these other parts are sort of got dents, so it's grinding down these points, which is interesting enough. Now, you want to make sure your holes meet on the same side. So stand up your stone on a nice flat way. Have a look at it. Make sure it's standing flat, perfectly uh, straight up, perpendicular, I think that's called. And then you want to measure from the crosshairs sort of thing. So just get like this. Make sure you're getting that spot right. 
about 24 or whatever that's at there. And that is the same on the other side. The width of my stone is about nine centimeters. So um, we've gone through about 3.3 centimeters from one side and 2.7 from the new side. And uh, that means we've got about three centimeters to go. So the newer technique I've been using and um, is actually giving me some great results is to um, alternate between grinding with your hand like that and actually uh, hammering it at the same time. Yeah, one spin, spin, spin. And what this is doing is it's pulverizing the stone and at the same time it's flattening out this uh, nip just a little bit so that when I do come back to grinding it, I just sort of, I get to take out all those bits of stuff that's been pulverized. When you get closer in to where the holes are meeting, stop doing the pulverizing. You don't want to pulverize it because you'll send a crack through the entire project and you'll shatter it. And when you've worked so hard on it, that's the last thing you want. I started the other hole on the other side with the rock again. We're back and we have just busted through. The last stage was done with this little wood chisel. Hopefully you can see that little hole. Right there. That is a monumentous occasion. I'll just get it all the way through from the other side. Aha! Yes! Success! We're gonna keep on widening the hole and uh, then we've got to keep on chiseling it into a circle next step. That's awesome. I uh, put down the mallet at the end there uh, in the last, say, I don't know, five mil, just to prevent shattering the entire project. Yeah, proud of that. So that's so far a week into the project. Could have saved myself a lot of time if I had done the hammering in technique first. I suppose it just sort of, it, again, it's just pulverizing the, the stone is what you're essentially doing, so. A project update. The hole was widened out using, uh, let's see, initially the round one here. Yeah, nice thin little dooley there. And then this little sort of chamfered one here. Still not perfectly straight, uh, level through and through, but pretty good. Now I've been upgrading my tool kit around the side here and I've been using this old chisel here just to be able to sort of carve out the basic shapes here and I'll just show you what I'm talking about there. When it's got like a little nice tip like that, um, ideally if it had a, just a point that'd be perfect but I don't have one with a point so this is the closest thing. You know, you start in, you get your angles. I'm getting a lot better at nicking off just the pieces that I want to nick off. Safety first. What I've done here, this is now the second side template. So I'll just lift it up. There's the old side there. And there's the new side. And this one I've actually glued on using clay. So I just sort of got a little bit of clay, a little bit of water, and uh, made clay glue. I kind of feel like first man, you know? Inventing the wheel, you know? My name, Ugg. Grr. I invent wheel, and so forth, you know? I have gotten as far as I feel is safe without cracking off excess of this uh, wheel here. The next step is I'm currently building a pottery kick wheel and I'm going to use that kick wheel to be able to spin this wheel so that I can get a perfectly even sanding on it. So we'll go over that pottery kick wheel and we'll show you that. So this here, this little frame and these three is going to be the central pivot point for that wheel. This is all done with offcuts of pallet and a bed frame that I found lying on the side of the road. 